Good evening, everybody. Welcome to an all-new episode of Hollow Theater, and this is the special one. This is the big one of the year. Well, besides our last episode, obviously, but it's the 2022 Hollies. Joining me tonight is my co-host and uh, former award winner, Kendall Hallman. How are you doing tonight, sir? A little bit of zero hour in my life. I'll add to the force train every time. A little bit of low thaws all I need. Hair in the ghost is what I see. The Lothal capital in the sun. The Jedi temple all night long. Ezra's rooster talking down of there, of course. Gonna make you lose all your force. It's force strain number five. <laughs> So that's our opening number for tonight's show, obviously. Uh, Kendall joining us from his local Chili's. Uh, how did you get the bubbly uh, Chili's? I have my ways. You have your ways. You're, uh, you, clearly, you uh, did something a little shady. I do have, do have, uh, do have uh, some some authentic Chili's nachos. <laughs> Uh, the crowd wants an encore, but we'll wait until the end of the episode. <laughs> so, yeah, tonight is the uh, the big show. It's the Hollies. We have eight categories to to show off, to uh, announce the winners. Uh, we had over 40 people vote on uh, these categories. Uh, we're also going to give away a Hollow Theater pack tonight as well. Actually, we're going to give away another one, too. So we're going to give one to just somebody who entered. And we're going to give someone in the chat a chance to win a pack as well. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the OCS. We're going to talk about Worlds. Because, hey, guess what? Worlds is only two weeks away. I know Kendall's going. I'm going. Do you have your decks ready? Um, I have decks ready. Are they good? I don't know if they're the ones that I'm going to be playing. Why not? Uh, because I, you know, don't know. Because <laughs> I lost too many times this past weekend. I, you lost to Matt Carulli. Everybody lost to him this weekend. I lost to Matt Carulli and to Sean and to Justin Carulli. So you lost to almost everybody from Pittsburgh. Every, everybody. Yeah, I got one win against. I got one win against Sean, and lost the other three, and. Also, the guy that drove me lost all four of his games. So the Columbus players were one and seven. And that, but that, that, it was too hot in there. It was a pizza place. What do you expect? I, it, I've been there. That is the only time it's ever been too hot in there. That's fair. I mean, we've, that's, that's the third time I've been there. And, and it's, yeah. So uh, that's my excuse. <laughs> well, so why don't we get into it? Uh, we have uh, a bunch of categories tonight, some really good nominees. Everybody's excited. I know you're excited. Uh, the chi the people behind you in the Chili's, they're excited too. Uh, they're motionless. Yeah, it's actually kind of a slow night. There's just that one family back there. Yeah, but see, they're motionless with excitement. That's true. That's true. And they've so, got their backs. They can't even They can't even watch. They got their backs to me. I well, I mean, at this point, like, maybe they just don't care who wins. No, they do. I, they do. I do. You know, I know you do. I, I care. You care. Everybody does anybody cares. not know why it's Chili's 2? It, it's it's and Chili's. So let's go ahead and minimize us because nobody uh, wants to see us talk about it and let's go ahead and get into the actual show itself this is the 2022 hollies everybody let's go get right into the car first category so our first category of the night is the most versatile player so this is the person who spends uh, spends a lot of time on gamp or in person for that matter they play in almost every format they play any type of deck they doesn't mean they're the best player they just play so our nominees for this category are anthony howard batmouse or gemp sheriff brad kipple paul todd feldman ryan jelson Ryder, and timo dussel uh who do you like kendall uh I mean, I don't know. 
most versatile player. Uh, I don't know. I think we talked about this before, but uh, my gut currently with my uh, two sips of wine brain uh, <laughs> is I feel like Batmouse. Like, like Timo's a better player than Batmouse, but um, I just think of Batmouse as the guy. I think of Batmouse as the guy that starts every single league and then posts a game with every single league. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Timo just plays like a raw, like numbers and I don't know how well he does in those other formats. He's I, I mean, good in Timo does do pretty well. Yeah, uh, he does play in a lot of different formats. But I, I mean, Brad Kipple plays in a lot too. You see him playing in all like the, all the Jedi, all the the uh, the non open format stuff. He plays in the open format. He does really well. He's made the OCS a couple of years, so I, I think it's a gr uh, gr good group of uh, players. Uh, Ryan. Ryan plays a lot, uh, but he also plays a lot of different decks. Like, he's been playing uh, Agents in the Court a lot, so. But let's go ahead and see who the uh, the voting public has selected as their most versatile player. Our 2022 most versatile player is... Ryan Jelson, member of Team Moneyball. I uh, don't see Ryan in the chat, so Jared, would you kindly say a few words about him? Or Adam, uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Sarson are uh, all me uh, team members of him, so let's just get a good Moneyball sweep. Let's go. Uh, no. <laughs> but let's... Yeah, they're saying that's one. So Moneyball is clearly celebrating the fact that they have won the first award of the night. I mean, the nice thing about the interesting thing about this award is, unlike most of the other wars, it implies that somebody is good at Star Wars cards. Uh, Jared is saying that Ryan is very skillful with recoil and fear, uh, no doubt. I, I know Batmouse has said the same thing. Playing against Ryan is—I've played against Ryan living in so, uh, Southern California. Definitely a very—he's not the most like. It's not like crazy like a Batmouse deck but it's definitely different a lot of people when they see me for the first time recoil in fear <laughs> oh god wow oh yeah he's also a big fan of the wookies okay on to our second uh category of the night our second one is the best holo theater co-host. Uh, Kendall, you won this last year. I did. Uh, so why don't you go ahead? Are you uh, are watching the stream at all right now? I am watching the stream. So okay. I, so if you want me to read the names, yeah, I will you, read you know them what? after We're 15 have awkward you do... seconds of silence. Yeah, we'll have you do the honor tonight because you are our reigning holo theater co-host of the year. Uh, these nominees for this year are... Like, can you, maybe, can you, is there a chat in the, the thing? Can I, can you just post it there and then I can read it there? Uh, like in the, in the discord? I, or no, you have to, you can't do that because of reasons. Yeah. You can send it in Slack. You can, you want to DM me in Slack? Uh, if I bring open Slack, it kind of takes away the stuff, but yeah, I'll, uh. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what the best way of doing. It. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll read it off I mean, and then. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. You can, or you can just read or you can just read them, whatever. And then we'll talk about them. So our first nominee is Anthony Howard again. <laughs> uh, Bad Mouse has been on a few times. He hasn't been on recently. Uh, definitely. What? Uh, how do you feel about Bat Mouse as a co-host? That's I what mean, actually, you know, I feel like besides that. me, Bat Mouse is definitely the best co-host of Oh, and two with corn and bat mouse. Yeah, when are we gonna get another of those? Oh, that's that was so hard. It's no, so it much wasn't. work. No, it wasn't. It was so much work, nope. and then like suddenly the next episode, all the jokes we wrote weren't funny. <sighs> well, we need some new ones. <laughs> Just bring back puppet Chris Kelly for like half an hour. That's all you need to do. Uh, our next nominee was Brad Reinhold. Uh, Brad, I think, has done one episode so far, but he's definitely new to uh, the whole. Uh, co-hosting duties so 
uh, figure it was uh, we could easily just nominate him. Uh, next on our uh, nominees is James Martin. James is really good when he comes on. He definitely like takes his co-hosting duties seriously. He puts up a lot of information in the chat. Uh, I think I have a good rapport with James. What do you think? He's he's great. He's James is James is great. James is solid snack, right? Yeah. Okay. I glad because uh, because solid snacks great. If it wasn't, then he was an asshole. Um, but no, solid snacks great. Uh, his his deck tech videos uh, uh, for the for the events are some of the ones that are my favorite. He's he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of enthusiasm. And and uh, when he's when he's on as a co-host and you have a guest, he asks way better questions than you do. Um, that's because I mean, he sorry, actually... he asks very good questions. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I was actually gonna agree with you and just say that James actually comes prepared. Uh, our next nominee is Jared Napolitano, our marketing advocate and guy who does pretty much everything involved in this game. Uh, Jerry stepped in earlier this year when I was moving, uh, did some episodes with like Johnny Chu and I forget who else he did, but Johnny, Chu was the big one. And, uh, Jared, uh, I think co-host once with me and, uh, definitely had a lot to talk about. <laughs> uh, what do you, great. you like Jared? Jared is, Jared is like, I mean, and James to a lesser extent, really, but Jared is that guy that is like, he like I you know I I never get tired of this story he got he, he got to where he is now as marketing advocate because he was like why isn't people t using the Twitter you guys are dumb and then people were like well why don't you do it and he was like okay fine I will and then like there was some fighting and then suddenly like he completely like revolut revitalized the 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 players committee's entire social media presence and he is just always really really pushing in it you know he follows up he he starts a, one of the things with the players committee because because we're a, a volunteer organization like he will be like project i will do and then like nothing ever follows up so uh yeah he's he's uh he's great he's great on a scale of one to ten definitely a number <laughs> Uh, on scale, yes, he's a, at least an eight point five. I don't know what it is a scale measuring, but he is whatever scale it is. He's an eight point five. Well, next, our next candidate is Mr. Mike Kessling, uh, co-host of the Kessling Run. Uh, definitely not a uh, vain uh, podcaster at all, but definitely a great guy. One of the nicest guys in Star Wars has one of the best laughs in Star Wars, and. Uh, yeah, definitely one. Uh, he's done a lot of like co-hosting with me, so I definitely want to have him back on as a co-host. He's 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 a uh, he's great. I, I don't think I've seen him co-host, but I really like Kessling Run. Um, and uh, Kessling Run has I think Kessling Run's my new favorite. Uh, my new favorite uh, uh, podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm just you know. I, I mean, said it's, new. I think it's been two weeks. That's new. all I'm saying. I think it's been two weeks. No. <laughs> did you if you started coming out with the uh, podcast this year? <laughs> I did technically. Technically, Corn on the Horn started at the beginning of the year. Oh, I thought it was earlier than that. Well, I I've just been around so Corn long on the Horn this year. <laughs> oh, that's fair. But yeah, Mike, uh, Mike for uh, co-host of the year. And uh, yeah, so our winner of the 2022 co-host of the year. Uh, you know what? We're going to, I think next year we're going to call this the Kendall Holman honorary co-host of the year. <laughs> you won the first one. The public has spoken and Jared Napolitano is the winner. Congratulations to Jared. Nice. So Jerry, uh, you're in the chat. So speech. Ryan is definitely that's saying two. that's two. <laughs> Waiting on Jared to uh, say something. Absolutely honored. Thank you, all voters. 
Uh, now, I will say this. This one and there was three other ones that were within two votes. Each of them. Oh, yeah. Now, we're, now we will be doing trophies for every Holly winner. I like that. We should have. I think we should have. done. Did you get a Holly trophy last year? Uh, no. Well, no. talk to Scott. I, I got an, I, I got enough stuff. It's fine. <laughs> Send it to starving children in Peru. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's generous of you. We'll send them in your... Just not my deck box. If How you, about Chili? I need, I need all the deck boxes. You're not Brian Fred. Yeah, he only <laughs> needs one of each. Uh, he's already got that. I'm surprised we're not all dusted yet. But I'm really hoping for a on. Cat Bane deck box at some point. Moving on to best commentator. Uh, this is for everybody who commentates games on uh, Twitch, uh, who comes on, donates their time to uh, talk about the game. Uh, a lot of people said this was the toughest category. I do agree. This one was with, again, this one I believe was within two votes for the winner and second place. So your nominees are some jerk. Uh, me. Uh, <laughs> Jan Westergaard. Jan stepping up and doing commentary, er, commentary at Worlds last year and the Endor Grand Prix. Uh, definitely donated a lot of time to do those. Some jerk 2024. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not running for president. Uh, but yeah, Jan did a great job at the Indoor Grand Prix. He did a great job at Worlds last year. Definitely provided a unique uh, voice to the game. Jared Napolitano. We cannot stop nominating this guy. Uh, definitely does a really good job uh, with his commentary. I mean, definitely has a good perspective of the game. Jeremy DePaulo. Jeremy did a really, really good job at the NPC and Nationals this year. Uh, he did Nationals for day two, and I feel like he's definitely one of those players who, if he wasn't playing, I would love to have as a commentator. Also, he's the tech guy behind Kessling Run, so uh, I think it's been two weeks. Yeah. You know, when's the next episode? That's all I'm saying. I know. And next we have Joe Olson, a guy who I think has an idea of what he's doing when it comes to Star Wars. I don't know. I don't know. I'm starting to get suspicious of him. I feel like every time before an event, he like says some weird stuff and makes me think that everything's wrong. Yeah, but that's I, fair. You know, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ever since, ever since he won Worlds in whatever it was 2020 and he was like these decks suck and then he played them i've been yeah. like it's mine can games. you really believe anything that comes out of joe's mouth when it comes I, to yeah, decks i don't know yeah. i don't know, I don't now, know. now i will say this like i really would like to see joe do some more commentary so maybe instead of playing at worlds he should just decide to sit behind the desk and do some commentary ah, ah. that's that's true i mean he wasn't gonna you know he's not gonna win <laughs> yeah i mean the the odds of successfully winning three worlds in a row are 3,720 to one. At least. And last but certainly not least is Justin Miyashiro. Justin does a really good, he did again, uh, did a really good job last year at Worlds. Uh, and definitely one of those players who, I mean, he's not part of the tournament committee, so he's definitely, and uh, I believe he's on the rules team too. No, he's not on the rules team, but he's definitely on the tournament uh, tournament tournament committee wow Let's try and say that five times fast yeah he's one of those people that like you walk up to him and you're gonna and you're complaining about somebody in the pc and you think you're just complaining regularly and then he's like no actually that was me yeah um so you know also also he had a lackluster performance at nationals and now the deck that he played is the deck that everyone's playing so i i don't know he's 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 got some communication skills definitely yeah I, I will say this, like Carl in the chat, your boy, points out the winner are tr the real winner is the fans because I think everybody on this list is definitely top tier with the exception of that first guy. <laughs> so you ready to figure out the winner? Yeah, let's let's see. Winner of comp best commentary. 
<laughs> Adam Adam Fletcher in the chat. Dan's name doesn't start with a J. How did I get on the list? Uh, the the Holly committee nominated me. And your winner is that jerk. <laughs> yeah, I I was really surprised. I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, some jerk. Yeah, no, I was really surprised between like uh, this was really a tough category. Congratulations. <laughs> is that? Oh my! Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the rules thank advocate. you. He, he decided to make, a, make an appearance. <laughs> yes. You deserve it, man. You're a great commentator. You no, understand? This it? makes my night. I think Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight's the best. <laughs> Better than Derek and, Jeter? I don't know about sports. I just know Luke Skywalker's best. <laughs> Lightsabers. Bye. <laughs> but, no. Uh, I'll tell you what. Like I voted for Joe. Because how could you not vote for Joe? But I'm glad to see that. I mean, I'm, I'm just glad to see that the community thinks so highly of me. Moving on before I start to like fall apart. Uh, biggest hollow theater fan. This is probably my favorite category because these are the people who come on every week, support the show. Uh, and uh, they sit, uh, come on to the chat, talk, you know, it, it, they're engaging. So this is my favorite category. And our nominees for the biggest Hollow Theater fan are Bill Kafer, uh, Taco Bill. He usually shows up late, but he's almost here every week. I mean, he has like some pub trivia something or as I knock over my microphone. Uh, he has like pub trivia every Wednesday until like eight or nine thirty. Chris Kelly. <laughs> I mean, we just saw him. Uh, yeah, he had to leave. He had to, he had to go back and uh, count his uh. LSJKs. He said his arm was too hot. <laughs> uh, and, next, and he couldn't get his hat to stay on. Uh, David Woods. So I know David, uh, he doesn't really watch and engage in the chat. However, when we had the uh, deck building challenges and everything, he did them every week. There were, he was literally the person that I had to say, you cannot enter because you won too many. But no, David also pays attention in like almost every stream. Uh, definitely one of the bigger fans. Uh, he does watch it, but not actually during the. the He's, I mean, he he engages. He, he does. He has. He was the like. When everybody was posting their all their swag when they got like the donations and Dave. the Hall of Theater sticker stuff, he had. It was a boot. It was like a booster box of of swag that he had earned be, from doing all the tokens and things like oh yeah no it's when, awesome plus he's already getting he's already getting this at worlds there you go is that the better copy it is the it is the better did copy. you sign it not yet ah uh, but i'll definitely he did request a personalized good uh thing so i will definitely do that our next nominee is james martin uh james <laughs> i mean he puts out the twitter every day uh, he's on, he's in the chat, he's paying attention, he watches it. Uh, definitely somebody who likes Hall of Theater, whether he wants to like uh, like it or not. Can I just say, nachos, when you make them before the stream and then you're eating them during the stream, the cheese doesn't stay fresh. <laughs> First world problems, my friend. It is, it is dry as a bone. And also, I got to say, as much as I love this Chili's uh, ambiance, uh, this uh, this salsa, which my wife ordered from Chili's for lunch uh, when she got DoorDash, uh, not very good. Okay. Uh, next up, Carl, your boy. I mean, he's been on the chat like almost right like he's actually in the chat typing stuff right now. Like, what do you want to say about Carl? What do I want to say about Carl? He's, he's, he's apparently, if he's watching now, he skipped actual playtesting for Worlds to <laughs> to uh, to watch this. Because I know that I skipped actual playtesting for Worlds. <laughs> um, uh, to, Who to needs to playtest? 
We were we were definitely going to meet up tonight with uh, with our buddy Travis to do some playtesting. But Fail. this is more important. This is more important. Well, no, you getting Chili's nachos is more important. I, yeah. Maybe maybe next time I'll get actual Chili's nachos yeah. instead of getting leftover chips from my wife's lunch that she got at Chili's and melting cheese on top. Yeah, they're not very good. And our next nominee is Ryan Saracen. Ryan, in the chat... Uh, I think he's a little devastated by the fact that Moneyball hasn't swept every award, but I will say this, he's up for this one right now, so Ryan, if you're there, say something. I believe Ryan Serson actually went to Chili's for dinner tonight. He did. Uh, he posted a picture he of his did. nachos in the, in the Slack chat, so he is better than me. True story. That's what he just said. He also said it was bad. Uh, <laughs> but so let's see our hollow theater biggest fan is bill kafer bill uh again he's not on he's not in the chat like i i'm a little sad about voted that for him democracy is dead i know voided <laughs> Ryan's saying is voided. Well, I will say this. Uh, Bill, like I said, has come on MS every time in the uh, a little bit later in the show. He does usually help out with, like, say, the lore challenges and stuff. Scott, let's uh, you let's hear some. Uh, Scott, go ahead and say something about Bill uh, really quick. Would you uh, would you kindly? <laughs> Bill is a tireless fan of hollow theater no bill's he's great taco bill's great he uh, is you're right he, you're right about the lore challenges that that actually that actually changes my mind okay it is a surprise though uh same here so our next category is quipper of the year these are people who say the funny stuff on like slack the forums discord facebook all that fun stuff so uh, and this one was a really tough one, too, because there's a lot of good people for this one. Our nominees of Quipper of the Year are Chris Hall, Joker King. I mean, his literally, his name is Joker King. Mm -hmm. Chris Kelly. I mean, as we saw by... Uh... <laughs> Joker King says, where did Luke get yeah. his bionic hand? The secondhand store. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I want him to. I would love him uh, to sign like a bionic hand saying that. But moving on, Drew Lichtenstein is uh, our next nominee for Quipper of the Year. Drew always says something like, he'll he randomly comes on to Slack, but he says something really good when he does. Jared Napolitano, also our nominee for the Quipper of the Year. This is his third nominee. Kendall Hallman. I don't know how yep. you were nominated, but you got well, nominated. Well, you know, people were recoiling in fear, probably. <laughs> uh, Matt Lutz, CRG. I mean, how could we not nominate CRG when he always says, this person won Slack for the day, and half the time it's Matt? It, yeah, I mean, I mean, Matt... The, 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 the winning Slack thing, the interesting thing about the winning Slack bit is, first of all, <laughs> it's it's like humble because yeah. because like he's he's crediting someone else, um, which is very rare on the Internet. Second of all, like the like this person wins the Internet gag 99 percent of the time feels tired and old and whatnot. But Matt, not this way, like finds the exact right one. You know, that's why nobody else is allowed to declare the winner of Slack. Pretty much, yeah. And last but certainly not least, Ryan Sarson. Ryan creates a lot of good memes. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. High but quality, high quality. High quality memes, but you know what? No meme of the year. Ooh. Jared said he's the funniest man in Star Wars CCG. So, our winner... For Quipper of the Year. Drum roll, please, Kendall. Uh, that's not a drum! The 
drums are on the other side of the room. Kendall Holman! <laughs> Finish that bubbly, sir. And now a speech. <laughs> That's not a speech. It's Carl says it's rigged. Not, oh, shoot. I, not supposed to say bad words, probably. No. But I, this I, is I, speech. Pretty great. Pretty great. Um, best Hollies ever. Uh, I'd like to thank the Academy. Uh, You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> special thanks to, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm tired. But <laughs> I was going to say special awesome. thanks to Puppet Chris Kelly. Puppet Chris Kelly. Batmouse. To, uh, to Batmouse, to, uh, to, to Travis for giving me your alcohol, <laughs> to Kroger for selling hold me on, this. Hold on. Okay, you're, 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 you're 50 seconds to, up, sir. To, to, to Chili's for having bad nachos. Oh, this is this is uh, truly, well, truly a special moment for me. Well, moving on, we're going to get Dan to your for coming award. up with this crazy self-indulgent award ceremony. <laughs> this is your second year in a, war, a row winning something, sir. Exactly, and it's yeah, incredibly we're, we're self-indulgent. So, but you know what? It's okay. Now it is time for you to give out an award. This is your out of nowhere award. Okay. So the I don't remember who the nominees are. The nominees are Brandon Thompson for bringing two two player game uh, decks to a tournament. Devin Hubner for creating uh, your favorite new card, the Tuscan Raider with hunting rifle. Uh, Fatty's Jar Jar special. Oh yeah, that was amazing. That was amazing. Carl for being an amazing rookie. And the Masasi Training Temple for putting out nearly 50 videos. So I'm actually going to slack you the winner and then you can uh, announce it. Okay, okay, sir? Let me find Slack. Okay. I'm on Slack. I should have waited to have Puppet Chris Kelly announce this one. Yeah, you I should. Mean, Where is he? He's, he is on the floor, crumpled up in my hand, and my arm is hot. Uh, All right. Crumpled, crumpled this up is, now, this is a surprise to even me. Yeah. So the winner of your Out of Nowhere Award is... is Andy. Masasi Training Temple. For putting out nearly 50 videos. That's in... That's, yeah. That's a lot of videos. That's a lot of videos. And I'm sure he's in bed right now because it's like because it's like three o'clock in the morning in, in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So he's definitely not watching. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he'll watch it in the morning. But I, I will say this, though. Definitely deserve like the fact that he has toiled endlessly to create nearly 50 videos. He probably put out more since this was a we yeah, put out this. Yeah. Show. He ha he definitely has he has put out a couple a couple of videos in the last in the last few weeks. Um, yeah, because he was doing uh, the Naboo regionals coverage. I think when we announced it, and he was still still yeah. releasing videos. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, definitely. You know, <laughs> Masasi Training Temple is a great place for uh, Star Wars CCG content. Yeah. You know, there's I. I I mean, there's you, you know a lot. Of, you guys all obviously know Hollow Theater. A lot of people listen to my podcasts and we get, you know, there's a lot of attention, but there are other people that create content. Yeah. Um, and actually Fatty's videos too uh, yeah. are, are a lot of, are a lot of fun. Uh, fatties are like, tend to be like real short, except for when they're amazing works of alternative comedy. Yeah. Um, go watch, but uh, just go but, watch. These but, yeah. Andy's, Andy's, uh, Andy's videos are great. And he's got that, he's got that British accent. So you feel like you're having a spot of tea. Um, good, good times. Yeah. Good times. Definitely worth it. So he'll get a special award as well as his trophy. And, uh, yeah. Moving on. We, I think we have two left for tonight. Uh, 
Our next one is the best on-air moment or episode. Uh, this is highlighting something that happened on Hollow Theater within the last year uh, that was funny, good, you know, just a, a good experience. Uh, our nominees are Brian Fred and his Sacagawa story from the uh, Endor Grand Prix. <laughs> Please go back and watch that. That is great television. Uh, Kendall talking about you and Carl winning the Nationals team tournament. Uh, that was amazing because we literally had on Joe Olson to talk about him winning Nationals. And we ended up talking about you in the team tournament and Carl for 40 minutes. <laughs> like you, I like you, talking about myself. I, well, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I can't blame you because you won the team tournament. I, I, I mean... I, to be fair, it's not like Joe is uh, uh, starving for victories at this point. Mm. But yep, yep, he's like, oh, I w I'm, you know, I went to Washington again, <laughs> met the president again, you know. Uh, Stephen Fulner and Kuhn, uh, I'm not gonna pronounce your last name, Kuhn, just because I don't want to mess it up. Uh, explaining the ideas between uh, behind the V Set 19's Thrawn theme. Uh, they came on and were really good. They explained a lot in detail about the Thrawn objective and everything, their ideas and everything behind the, the objective. So I really, that was a fun episode. And then Team Europe coming on air for their Outrider Cup victory. Uh, that was just great television. Like that was really fun for me to host that. All the six members of Team Europe at one time uh, talking about how they, uh, they uh, defeated Team USA. And now it's the, the whole Outrider Cup series is tied one to one. Which one was your favorite, Kendall, besides yourself? Uh, <laughs> the only one I watched was Steve Fulner and and uh, Coon. Oh. So I guess that one. <laughs> you make me sad, sir. Well, I sometimes watch the show. It's every Wednesday. It's a lot. It, it is. Yeah, early nominee for next year is definitely the Joe, Chris, Drew, Brad, and uh, Jared episode. That one was a really fun episode, too. But for right now, your best on-air moment or episode winner is Brian Fred and the Sacagawa story. Nice. Oh, man. Uh, you have to go watch it. It was great. I was dying laughing. No, yeah, Ryan, no contest. I'm sorry. Like, it, this was, yeah, this one was really good. Yeah, Brian, you're in the chat. Speech. Speech, be Fred. Yes, yeah, speech, be Fred. But, yeah, definitely a great moment. And I'll tell you what. Uh, just down You know, here. Dan, you should, uh, you should edit... You should edit down uh, all of those clips Into that a got nominated and post them isolated to YouTube so that people can see the nominees. That's a good idea. Yes, Bill, you were uh, very drunk. And uh, Bill, I don't know if anybody has told you, but congratulations. You are the fan of the year. You <laughs> know, uh, Brian Fred in the chat. I would like to thank Herrick for giving me glory to make the story possible. Yeah, it was a great story. But on to our last and probably the most uh, two years in a row. Were you fan of the year last year too? If so, I definitely screwed up. <laughs> no, no you, you deserved it, Bill. But on to our last category and possibly the most uh, important one. Uh, definitely the one that a lot of people are waiting on because it was the most fun one last year. Oh, okay. But our last category of the night. Meme of the year. We have seven nominees for this meme of the year. First up, never got to never go to test four. Uh, build competitive decks. Be Thanos. Once again, Desai is asking. 
the Be Better Al, Sad Dan. It's like a Friday for me. And then Team 5. Okay, Kendall. Which one do you think it is? I mean, I mean the to me it it's it's so okay, so when I was in high school, there was this one band at the Battle of the Bands that was clearly way more popular than the rest. Yeah. And I was like, you guys should vote for my band. And they're like, no, if we voted for your band, we'd be throwing our votes away because we because there's no chance that you're gonna win. It's obvious fate's gonna win. I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for them. Fate was the name of the band. And I said, no. And when I say I, I mean actually a guy that was with me that is not mm -hmm. going to see this, so I'm taking credit. I said, no, <laughs> voting for fate is throwing your vote away because they're obviously going to be the ones to win. So you want to vote for somebody. So if people were thinking like that, then Brian Fred as Thanos is not going to win. If there's any justice in the universe, then Brian Fred as Thanos has to win. Well, so I will say this. I don't know how this happened, but unfortunately, the last slide got cut off. And uh, I, I just have to say what the winner is. So the winner of Meme of the Year is, by popular demand, none of these. Because they all tied. They all tied? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, B, it's, it's B Thanos, obviously. B Thanos is definitely meme okay. of the year. How I mean, the system works. The system worked. So congratulations to its creator, Ryan Sarson. Uh, definitely put in the uh, the time and the effort to create this meme. Uh, th this is definitely meme of the year. I think this needs to go onto a virtual card. I don't know how. I don't know when. But if there's any justice in the world, we need to get this on. So I was on card. I was on the Star Wars TCG uh, independent development committee website, and they did, and I I learned that they actually did a Spider Man set for their TCG. Okay. Um, so you know maybe we could do a, a a Marvel set for. I can't even finish that. No, but I will say this. So congrats to Ryan. He created it. Congrats to B Fred for looking amazing in this. So definitely meme of the year and definitely a fun little meme i hate the bubbly like bubbles so much i just filled it up all the way and it only filled it up that much well maybe you should have more bubbly sir i mean i'm doing pretty good oh uh, so that is everything we have for tonight well that is everybody thank you for joining us for the hollies and everything that is the hollies of the year uh the 2022 that is the close of the show uh so hopefully everybody enjoyed all the categories we'll have some exciting new categories for you guys next year uh on this show as well uh definitely look we didn't at even have to have any pre-taped segments no for the left awards the what uh, that was that. Sorry, that was an award show joke. Us <laughs> award show junkies get the joke. I don't watch award shows. I have a, I have more important things to do with my life. And like uh, talking about what's coming up in the Star Wars CCG world. Kendall, what's coming up in two weeks? In two weeks? Yeah. Uh, that would be um, the weekend that I have off before Worlds. Yeah. Because Worlds is in two weeks, everybody. It's in three weeks or two and a half weeks. Or two and a half weeks. It, it's in a, it's in a time span. Uh, I forget exactly <laughs> when. Uh, there's, no, there's two weekends between now and there's two it Saturdays. Two weekend, between now and yeah, then. there's two Saturdays. That's what the important thing is. So, but yes, Worlds is coming up. It's right around the corner, October 13th through the 16th in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Kendall or not Kendall, uh, Mike Hessling and uh, Drew are hosting this one. There's a lot of good players going, a lot of good prizes. Uh, if you pre-register, you have two days to pre-register. Make sure you guys pre-register because you get a PCXL deck box, deck box and an Ezra Blaster lightsaber foil card. On Friday is the uh, Throdos Cube. And uh, spoiler alert, we're going to have Throdos on next week on Hollow Theater to talk about the cube and everything. Uh, the winner will get a Ray deck box. 
Uh, two random players will get the, quote, coffee mugs. I'm excited for those. Uh, if you just play, you get a green poker chip and the Kanan Jarrus Jedi Knight uh, foil. Uh, also, two random player, uh, two random played rares to each participant. Uh, the team tournament is Friday evening. Uh, the foil that you would get is Thrawn's art collection. If you're dark side, light side gets Zeb. Uh, you also get the green poker chip, uh, the green device poker chip. Yes, make sure you pre-register if you have it. Pre-registration is the most important thing. Uh, the winner will get the glass mugs. Uh, including the Jedi Meditation Room and the Poker Objective uh, Poker Chips. I'll tell you what, those glass mugs are really nice. You got yours, Kendall? Y yes. Uh, the Oh, for winning the team tournament? Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, it's in my basement. It's. Uh, I don't have it here at Chili's. But it's... <laughs> oh, actually, no, it's not over there. <laughs> it, I think it's in the cupboard. I actually... Was gonna use it as a glass at one point, and, I, and now it's in the back of the cupboard. Um, that wasn't the plan, but the but yeah. I have mug mugs, coffee mugs. No, uh, I've got several of those coffee mugs from the PC for various reasons. I have reasons. none of those. They're great. I have. I want one. I have three. Well, I share. I have a, I have a prototype of Jawa Council in a World's Twenty Twenty One. Ah. Uh. So, and then on the main event on Saturday and Sunday, participation will get the best. I mean, Darth Dan, Vader maybe foil. you'd get one if you ever volunteered for anything. I know, right? God. Uh, <laughs> but the, the main event, if you participate, you'll get the best uh, foil of the best Vader, Darth Vader, Betrayer of the Jedi. You'll get your pin, some poker chips, and then a special giveaway for the most creative deck. Uh, be creative. Play well. Cre uh, what's a creative deck, Kendall? A creative deck would be um, uh, if you like went to the Nationals deck list and you just like looked at the one that won and you just went card for card. Yeah, that's not a creative deck. Okay, it changed like three cards for the meta. <laughs> and then the top eight will get some other cool stuff. Uh, and then eight random gifts will be out, including more coffee mugs. Uh, packs of the PC logo golf balls and then the PC logo trucker hat. Uh, and then in the consolation, uh, foils will get miscellaneous foils. Uh, the winner will get an enhanced Cloud City uncut sheet or an enhanced, yeah, an uncut sheet of the enhanced Cloud City uh, dark side. Uh, the top, uh, the top two will receive top eight of a uh, AI foil pair that works in Obi Wan's hut. And poker chips, personalized glass trophies, and cash. And then four random players will get the coffee mugs. I really want a coffee mug, so if I don't get one, I will definitely trade something for it. Right now, we have a plethora of players who signed up. Big names include Greg Shaw, Matt Lutz, Drew Lichtenstein, Jared Napolitano, uh, Justin Miyashiro, Brian Fred, your meme of the year. Make sure you get, print out something and have him sign it. Uh, Ryan Searson, creator of the meme of the year. Uh, Mike Kessling, Johnny Chu returning for Worlds with his sons, uh, Kendall Hallman. So this is uh, like Johnny Johnny Chu coming back is like Rocky Five. Yeah, where like it's up where there. Like he kind of sort of he kind of sort of trains his son and do, and then doesn't and then he has like another protege that's like a jerk and they end up fighting in the street. No, you're wanna, thinking of you're thinking some... of Cobra Kai. No, that's Rocky Five. <laughs> But Not Bill Rocky K Four. You're thinking of Rocky Four. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, of Rocky I'm thinking five. of uh, the no. I'm thinking of Karate Kid Part Four. Uh, Ryan Jelson, uh, most versatile player, will also be there. Chris Kelly. Karate Kid Part I, Four is the one with the chick. Yeah, the best one. <laughs> the next Karate Kid. Yeah, that's the best one. I don't know. Okay, uh, Chris I, Kelly. I, think I don't the know. First if he, one's probably the best one. Obviously, uh, but Chris Kelly. I, we don't know if he's going to be there in puppet form or in. Chris Kelly form. Uh, and then main event only registers who uh, they don't want to participate in anything else. They just want to come and actually do well. Uh, those include Phil Ace, uh, Phil Ason, Joe Olson, Casey Anis, uh, Hayes Hunter, Matt Scott, our runner up from last year. And then two members of KTOD, Justin Desai and Steve Baroni. They're already registered. Huh? Speaking of Phil Ason, 
uh, got an interview with him uh, for Corn on the Horn coming up. Ooh. Uh, as well as uh, with Drew Scott, 2005 Ooh. world champion. That's going to be a fun one. Last night, so. Yeah. Hopefully those will be out before Worlds. Also, uh, go back and check out the my interview with Tom Hayde, uh, where that was his a good opinions one. are different than yours. Oh. Yeah, because he likes QMC. Yeah, he had some really interesting insights on, uh, like, the game and the meta and all well, sorts of things. He, yeah, um, he's not going to be at Worlds, so uh, unfortunately he has to open up another store. Well, regardless of whether or not he's at Worlds, he's, he's on the internet. On In more Corn ways on the than horn. one. Kendallcast.ninja and all the other places. Well, yeah, but this is Holo Theater, not Kendallcast promote yourself uh, uh, you, moving you, you on you just told me that you just told me that we that we had an award that was kendall cast presents the co-host of the year so you know i'm just saying yeah uh moving on really quick uh checking up on the a road to worlds tom and dylan are sitting at tied at 10 and 2 uh, and then uh finishing out our players who have reached the uh, end of it include suburban J. am not sure who that player is but he's sitting at eight and four uh connor britton at eight and four and then jared napolitano at four and eight jared what happened sir uh and then ready. checking up on Saving the for the real event uh, there you go and then checking up on the o the september ocs paul myers came out of nowhere to go 12 and of this month when opponent win percentage of 44 percent justin desai just he just ekes out and just aside by less than eight percentage points to uh take up the number one spot joe olsen sitting there in number two at 11 and one and then rounding out the top 10 connor britton tom struthers greg shaw jeff levine mike kessling matt harrison trader and ryan sarison so that's a pretty stacked top 10 right speaking there. of connor britton join play testing Yes. Connor wants you. And then speaking of the OCFs, uh, OC, OCS, our good friend Adam Fletcher has provided uh, myself with some interesting little numbers and graphics and stats. Uh, the first one, so he sh uh, sent over some numbers regarding the, uh, the most played cards this year for both sides. Uh, first, let's look at the dark side. So for dark side, no surprise, knowledge and defense is the most played card. However, looking at the rest of them, force push at number two, imperial command at number three, no escape at number four, blockade flagship bridge uh, with ten thousand, and then followed up by we must accelerate our plans at number six, right behind the, How, the bridge. Why is there less accelerates than bridges? I do not when know. Do you... Well, you got to remember they did just print out the new uh, cheaper oh, versions, for the, the seal yeah, bridge. For the, yeah. Okay. Uh, Imperial Still, you barrier. Three accelerates. For... Does something pull bridge that? Not that I know of. Seal off the does bridge that... does, but outside of that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, I guess seal off the bridge, but that still doesn't seem right. Yeah, well, three accelerates. Three accelerates and a deck, in a deck yeah. only counts as one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not the never copies. Mind. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Then that I forgot makes to perfect sense. That. I I retract my statement. And then Imperial Bear, my time to Dan. Sith Fury, and then the most played Dark Side character is Grand Moff Tarkin V. And Gick rounding out the top. Uh, interesting, uh, another little interesting tidbit, prepare defenses with number 14, and then the best dark side card, Tarkin's Bounty, was at number 20. Makes no sense. And then as for the light side, again, Anger, Fear, Aggression was number one, Walkling, number two, Jedi Levitation was three, followed by Ray, Rebel Barrier, heading for the Medical Frigate, Blaster Deflection, the Escape Pod Combo, Hojix, Anakin Skywalker, Padawan Learner was number 10. So that means people were playing Escape Pod Combo in a deck that they weren't playing a Hojix just for the don't lose the force? That's Possibly. This wine is starting to hit me. <laughs> and... 
who played and then yeah so those are the top 10 and then another interesting little tidbit so for uh adam sent over in this, this little graph showing like some of the uh progressions of when players are uh, have their best chance of making the ocs playoffs for example joe uh started off l with a like a, about a 62 percent chance uh, at the beginning of september however he's at almost 100 he's at a 100 percent chance as we get closer to october uh let's see blue is mike kessling mike also at 100 percent so uh, congrats to both of those players for playing really well. Uh, Ryan Searson also up there. Uh, looks like Paul Myers is also up there as well. Uh, I mean, he did just go 12-0 and in the OCS. Uh, Silver Glenn, uh, unfortunately, had a... He started off with about a 30%, but unfortunately tailed off at the end. Uh, the bigger surprise to me was uh, Tim Simon. So Tim started off with a real, he had like, towards the middle of the, uh, the middle, like about the 20th of the month, he had a pretty good chance of getting in there at a 50% chance. Unfortunately for Tim uh, with like Paul and uh, Mike Kessling uh, didn't, wasn't able to uh, fully get in there. I really don't understand this graph at all. Well, these are the players that were on like the bubble and stuff. So like Joe, uh, Mike Kessling. Okay. You know. I still don't understand it, but that's okay. <laughs> well, you've I had too really... much wine. I, I, when I'm stone cold sober, I don't understand the OCS calculations. So I guess that's. Yeah. It's just fun. It's just little stats that it's, we, uh, we it's can show. like, I don't know what a fan graphic is. Well, I will say this. This is what Adam does late at night when all of us are playing our games on games. He's in the background calculating all of these stats for us, and I love it. That's okay. what makes money. That's why Moneyball is the team they are. Not because they're good players or anything, because not, they have a guy doing all these Ryan stats. Ryan Searson in the back. looks like Brad Pitt. Ryan Searson does not look like Brad Pitt. Yeah, keep your eye on the bat, Kendall. And then our last stat of the night. This is a cool. This was a fun one. <laughs> See, that's a funny joke because you're supposed to keep your eye on the ball. Exactly. More wine, drink. And our last stat from Adam of the night: the top ten OCS upset uh, upsets of 2022. Uh, Lawrence Kraft. The top one was Lawrence Kraft over Justin Desai in August. Uh. Chris Westergaard over Bastion in February. Uh, J uh, Jay Warner over Bastion in May. Adam CFC over Silverglen in June. Uh, number five was myself over Tom in August. That one was crazy. I both. I was actually surprised that my win over Greg Shaw this month hasn't uh, wasn't on this list. Uh, and then I'm just glad that I've been a list with twice with Scott. Scott over Taco Bill in May. Um, How is Scott winning a game in upset? That doesn't make sense to me. Scott's like one of the best players in the, the history of the game. Yes, I agree. Maybe it was one of, with one of his goofy decks. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just like, I question, I question the, the statistical model of this data. I, I will say this, though. The fact that Bastion and Joe Olsen are on here twice losing, that's pretty big. Um, and then myself over Brad Kipple in June, uh, DJ Jackson over Joe in May, Scott over Joe in August, and then Al over Charlie Arlinson in March. So definitely a cool little stat. And I love it. I love stats like this. I, I don't know. You're not a baseball guy. So I'm assuming Obviously you're not a baseball you're not a bowler. No, I'm not. But that's so, even the, I got the quote wrong. God. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously uh, so not a golfer moving, is the quote. Yes, it is. Uh, oh moving God. on. So again, next week on our show, it's going to be uh, Throto. Uh, we're going to talk about his cube and everything he's put into it. Uh, so I'm excited for that one. And then we'll talk a little bit about worlds and everything. Uh, worlds again, two weeks, two Saturdays from now. I, I don't know. Like I'm excited. I don't care about play. I don't. My goal is to go five and three. Outside of that, I don't care what happens. Yeah, if you're a golfer, can get those sweet golf balls. I want more golf balls. I want to putt with the PC logo on them. 
where the places that I go, you don't use your own balls. They you use your own, and then <laughs> it goes into the tube at the end. <laughs> well, uh, that's one of the stuff. I haven't actually opened them. That's why I want to collect some, and then I want to actually use them on a golf course. My my cat hit all of them. Well, I find them in strange places. Well, that's when you just take the cat and say, "No, these are my balls." No, that's his okay. She can mess with them. No, cats are evil. The poker chips. The poker chips. The I poker chips are amazing. Not allowed to mess with. Yeah. So that is our show for this week. Again, I want to thank, uh, congratulate all the winners of the twenty two twenty two Hollies. Kendall, it's a great show having you on. Uh, go enjoy your chilies. Uh, <laughs> I, I will get this custom made. I'm looking forward to Junk Saturday Night Kendall at Wolves. I think everybody is. But so until next week, everybody enjoy your weekend. Uh, go enjoy some chilies, get some nachos, heat them up. Uh, until next weekend, again, everybody take care. And as always, may the force be with you. Good night, everybody. Good luck. Have fun. No reverts.